Okay, so we can start. So welcome everybody to the webinar of uh, today. Uh, the speaker of today is uh, Remy Zamanski, and he's going to talk about dynamics of fluid particle in turbulence. So as usual, I introduce the speaker very briefly, and then I'll give him the, the floor. So uh, Remy Zamanski is an associate professor at the Institut National Polytechnique uh, Polytechnic uh, de Toulouse since uh, 2013. Uh, he teaches at uh, the um, uh, NCAT, NCAHT, and uh, for the research of the, uh, he's at the uh, Institut de Mécanique de Fluides de Toulouse. Uh, he obtained his PhD in uh, uh, 2011 uh, from uh, Laboratoire de Mécanique de Fluides et d'Acoustique École Centrale de Lyon uh, under the supervision of uh, Mikhail Gorokovsky and uh, Ivana Vinkovic. In uh, uh, between, he did a two-year uh, postdoc at the uh, Center of uh, uh, Turbulent Research at Stanford University. His research uh, mainly focuses on the study and modeling of turbulence, particularly in the case of two-phase flows and flows subjected to magnetic fields. In terms of tools and methodology, he is interested in stochastic modeling and numerical simulations, and at the same time, he's developing an experimental activity in magnetohydrodynamics. So it's great, with great pleasure that we have today a speaker, Remy uh, Zamanski. So, uh, Remy, uh, I leave you the floor. I stop sharing my screen and you can start sharing yours. Uh, well, uh, thank you for the, the invitation. Thank you for the, the introduction. So let me share the screen. That's, you should be able, maybe I, oh, I have to switch in full screen, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. So hopefully, you, you should be able to, to see the, the slide. That's okay. Well, once again, uh, thank you for, for the invitation. And uh, well, I, as you said, I, I will be speaking about the uh, modeling for the, the, uh, the dynamic of fluid particles, the acceleration of fluid particles in, in turbulence. So, uh, well, it's a subject that actually I have presented here during the, the Lille Turbulence Program uh, in 2022. And so, well, I, I apologize if, uh, if some of you already saw the, the talk, but uh, well, uh, again, thank you for the invitation. So uh, that's about, uh, uh, we will speak about the, the, the motion of, of fluid particles in, the, in, in turbulence and, uh, and specifically in a in kind of uh, hypothetic turbulence, uh, the homogeneous and isotropic turbulence. So as you, as you know, when, you, we, when we want to study complex flow, like uh, that kind of, of river, there is, a, there is a two, basically two, two frameworks to, to, to study the flow. Either you can uh, be with, uh, with a layer and have uh, many observers that stand uh, along the bank of the, of the river, or you can be like a uh, Lagrange and be on a, on a little boat drifting with, uh, with the river. And as you know, uh, well, if you have uh, infinitely many of, of little uh, Euler or infinitely many little Lagrange along the, the river, that should be equivalent and you, you can do the map from one, uh, one framework to, to another. But uh, things are, are very different if, uh, if you are just one, uh, one of the, those kind of observers. And in the, in the talk today, uh, uh, we will uh, follow the, the Lagrange uh, Lagrange. Uh, uh, description of the, of the flow. Just, uh, can you see the, the pointer of the, uh, of the... Yes. Okay. Yes, we see the black pointer, yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Uh, and so for the, I, I will say for the last 20 years uh, or, or so, uh, there have been quite a few uh, remarkable features of, uh, of the Lagrangian turbulence that has been uh, I would say discovered, uh, and uh, just to, to name a few, uh, we we can have this uh, short list, uh, and probably uh, we can start with uh, the non-Gaussianity of the of the PDF of the acceleration. What does that mean? It means that if you you plot the, the probability density function of the acceleration, uh, you can see that uh, it develops very specific, uh, very stretched tails uh, that uh, depart significantly from the, the Gaussian distribution. And it means that uh, uh, fluid particles will experience a very, very strong acceleration uh, in, a, in a turbulent flow. And uh, so, for example, uh, there is that example of a little mustico in a, in a, in a turbulent flow that can experience a hundred of, of G. 
so very significant acceleration uh, and much, much larger than the, the, the standard deviation. So well, the, the standard deviation is not very well known named in, in, in that case. Another striking feature of the of the dynamic of a fluid particle in a, in a turbulent flow is the, the the time scale separation you have between the autocorrelation of its uh, component of one component of the of the acceleration. Here you can see it's uh, it's dropping uh, very fast of the order of the of the Kolmogorov time, the dissipative time. Whereas if you plot the decay of the correlation of the norm of the acceleration, you observe a, a very slow decay of the order uh, with, a, with a rate typically that uh, that is uh, the integral time of the of the turbulence and uh, that has a few few implications well firstly it uh, it says that uh, the, the, the dynamic of a fluid particle is a uh, is a uh, is a response to the full spectrum of the of the turbulence and uh, that basically uh, you need to account for the, the vectorial uh, the, the, the vectorial uh, properties of the of the acceleration as uh, you you need to distinguish between the component and, and the norm well and uh, a last uh, a last point to 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 finish that list is the the asymmetry that you have uh, between the the power that a fluid particle will uh, will recycle from the, the environment of the exchange of energy with all the other particles and uh, the, the energy it will give to all the other uh, other particles so that uh, that uh, that power uh, as you know is uh, is uh, is the work of uh, the rate of work of the of the force so it's uh, the scalar product of the, the dot product of the acceleration with the velocity and that uh, that power obviously uh, it's the, the rate of change of the kinematic energy uh, the kinetic energy sorry the kinetic energy of uh, the that fluid particle and what has been observed is that the the odd moment of the of that power are, are negatively skewed uh, so of course the, the first moment is, uh, is is zero because in average it is stationary in, in stationary turbulence uh, but the other odd moment are non-zero and that means that uh, typically and uh, uh, fluid particles will experience a uh, slow uh, slow uh, rate of increase of its kinetic energy and sharp decay of uh, of its uh, of its kinetic energy and that uh, that means that if you play, uh, for example, the, the movie that you have on, on that cartoon, if you play the, the movie uh, of the of the dynamic of the fluid particle in a, in reverse uh, in reverse order, uh, you you can notice that uh, something is wrong, and so there is an arrow of of time that uh, that uh, that is seen in the dynamic of one single particle, and uh, that is something that. Uh, well, uh, now maybe it seems natural, but uh, at not that long ago, as you can see, it was not uh, not expected. It was uh, it was mainly uh, I think it was mainly assumed that uh, the, the the dissipative uh, dissipative effect was mainly uh, sensitive in a uh, in multi particle approach or in the field approach. Okay, and so the the, the goal of the of the talk is try is trying to 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 give a unifying uh, description of those features and to make a connection, to make a bridge with uh, the, the, the turbulent cascade of, of, uh, of the turbulence. So just uh, quickly, because I assume you, you're already familiar with that, uh, just a reminder of the, 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 the Kolmogorov cascade. So when you know, in a, back to the Eulerian framework, uh, when we want to study turbulence, usually we, we, we study correlation of the velocity field. And from dimensional analysis, we can uh, express the, the variance, let's say, of, uh, of the difference between two points separated by a, a distance r as a function of the distance, the viscosity, the, the mean dissipation rate, the, the, the integral scale. And uh, with dimensional analysis, we can express that with, uh, with that form. And uh, Kolmogorov did two, two hypotheses that are essential in, uh, I, mean, I will say that uh, 
are very important in the study of turbulence. And the first one is uh, about the universality of the turbulence. And basically, he said that uh, if the, the, the Reynolds number is large and the, the scale separation is not too large compared to the, to the integral scale, uh, we may forget how the, the turbulence uh, has been produced and uh, obtain the following uh, expression for, the, for the, the variance of the velocity increment. And uh, further, he proposed a second hypothesis, uh, saying that if, in addition, uh, the, the, the scale is, uh, is also not too small, uh, that is to say large, before, uh, large compared to the, to the dissipative scale, uh, the, the viscosity is not important. And we obtain that uh, power law for the, the velocity increment and uh, the variance of the velocity increment that uh, essentially depend on the distance and the, the mean dissipation rate. And that's the, the idea of the, the energy cascade. And uh, that has been a, a received considerable uh, validation from numerics and, and experiment. But uh, there is a but in, a, in that expression, as you can see, this is the mean dissipation rate that appears, and uh, the, the dissipation fields present very large fluctuation and, uh, and is uh, basically non homogeneous. And uh, the, the, the dissipation rate uh, locally uh, can, uh, can be 100 of times uh, larger than the, the average value or 100 of times smaller than the, the average value. And uh, that means that uh, the, the mean dissipation rate uh, is uh, actually not the, the, the appropriate scale. And uh, what has been proposed uh, in, a, in a refined uh, version of the, the Kolmogorov model with uh, by Kolmogorov and Obukov is that to, to, to use instead a, a local, a local, a locally average dissipation rate over, uh, over a ball of size uh, R. And, uh, and he said that uh, using that locally average dissipation rate, uh, we can scale the, the velocity gradient, the, sorry, the, the velocity increment. And, uh, and uh, in, the, in the model, he proposed that the that distribution of the scaled velocity increment uh, should present a universal distribution. And uh, for that uh, for that uh, description, uh, the, the 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 locally uh, average dissipation rate is uh, basically connected to the to the multiplicative cascade process. And saying that you can uh, you can uh, view the. Um, the local so the dissipation rate locally average over a, a small a small volume of size uh, of uh, the n generation as a, a random process a random multiplicative process uh, scaling from the let's say the the, uh, the local dissipation rate average over a large cube uh, of the uh, the zero generation and uh, and then uh, using uh, the, the scale similarity assumption you can can say that the, the ratio epsilon one over epsilon zero and and so forth are, uh, are the, have the same distribution, and so that gives uh, uh, the, the, the the model or the, the hypothesis of having a log normal distribution for the, the, the dissipation. So just to summarize that, uh, the, the, small quantity, the small scale quantity, like the, the velocity gradient, uh, should depend uh, on the local value of the, of the dissipation rate within that model. And uh, because of that uh, cascade, uh, the, the multiplicative cascade, we expect that uh, the, that depend on the Reynolds number. And uh, we keep having an influence on the large scale, uh, of the large scale on the small, uh, small scale, like the, the velocity gradient uh, through that, uh, that multiplicative cascade. And that's what we, we call sometimes anomalous scaling, because despite the huge scale separation you have between the, the integral scale, typically, and the dissipative scale, uh, we have uh, an, a coupling between those. Uh, and so, well, to summary, uh, as summarized in that plot, you, you observe that uh, the, the velocity gradient uh, are non-Gaussian, and, uh, and the non-Gaussianity is more and more pronounced uh, when you increase uh, the Reynolds number. And so the, the, the question is, uh, is it the same for the, the Lagrangian description of the turbulence and specifically the, the acceleration? In a sense, we expect that as the acceleration is a, is a derivative of the, of the velocity along the path of the, of, the, of the particle, we should have the same, uh, the same behavior. 
And uh, indeed, uh, well, the, the acceleration here uh, we're speaking about is the material derivative, the total derivative of uh, the flow. And from the, the, the basic scaling, I, I would say we have, uh, we expect that the, the variance of the acceleration behave as a, as a the, the dissipative, uh, dissipative scale. So uh, to connect with the, the intermittency, uh, it has been reported that the, the square of the acceleration average uh, conditionally on the local value of the, of the dissipation rate present some kind of, uh, of power law dependence and, depend, and, and that shows that uh, indeed the acceleration depends on the local value of the, of the dissipation rate. Uh, as you can see here on the, on the curve here, it's, uh, it's increased as a, as a power law when you increase the local value of, of the epsilon. And in the meantime, it has been also reported that the, the variance of the acceleration conditionally average with the, the kinetic energy uh, uh, pres uh, present also some dependence with the, the kinetic energy. And it has been proposed in, the, in some paper in the literature that there is some power laws uh, that can be uh, that can be uh, used to describe that dependence. And uh, well, uh, and so the, the picture uh, that is usually found in the found in the literature is to say that uh, because you have a, 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 an effect of the large scale on the small scale, this is the reason why you have a, a kinematic or the, an effect of the kinetic energy on the on the acceleration through that uh, intermittency mechanism. But uh, as you see, I, I put question mark here to, to, because I, I question that, uh, as you will see. But uh, basically, the, the first, uh, very pragmatically, uh, we make questions the power law behavior because, uh, well, the, the velocity uh, basically is Gaussian. And so it doesn't vary uh, along uh, over a wide range. And so the, the, the power law will be, uh, I will say, at best with a limited uh, validity. So, uh, well, that brings me to the last uh, last slide of that long, uh, long introduction, and uh, and uh, where I explain what I, I would like to, to to present you in details, and uh, that's the, if you come back to the to the Navier-Stokes equation. So the le left hand side of the, the Navier-Stokes equation, as you know, is uh, the acceleration, and uh, the acceleration is given by the, the pressure gradient and the, and the viscosity term, and so that uh, that's as you can interpret, uh, the, the, the effect of the, the, the dynamic of a fluid particle uh, results from uh, the, the effect of the, the collective motion of all the other uh, particles and the, the dissipative, uh, dissipative dynamics. And so if we follow the, the first uh, hypothesis of Kolmogorov, uh, basically that the, the turbulence is universal, we may, we may uh, have a, a stochastic model for the, the the particle dynamics that um, uh, well that basically reproduce this collective and dissipative dynamics without uh, effectively I, I would say without accounting uh, explicitly for the motion of all the particles but just uh, having an effective uh, dynamic so that's a, a kind of stochastic equation here uh, for the for the acceleration, and uh, here you have uh, it's supplemented by a, a cinematic relation uh, linking the linking the, the acceleration and the, the rate of variation of the velocity. So if you are not familiar with that kind of equation, I'll come back in, in the second part of the talk. But basically, here you have the what we call the increment of the Wiener process, and there is here uh, the m is the drift term, and you have a diffusion term. And so, uh, well. Uh, I am not the, the first to propose that kind of equation for sure, but uh, basically what we can have is that the, the m and the d coefficient should depend uh, both on the local dissipation rate right? because uh, uh, because of the, that connection with the intermittency, and uh, that's the way we we build that kind of stochastic equation, and it's built on the on the conditional statistics. And so uh, to, to have the intermittency, as I said, uh, we, we want to, to reproduce the, the kind of conditional average of the acceleration with the dissipation rate. And uh, on the other end, uh, to have a stationary dynamics, it is necessary to have a, a feedback of the velocity here 
on the on the dynamic of the acceleration on the m and the d term uh, and that's ne that's uh, necessary to have a, uh, a kind of conditional uh, statistics between the acceleration and the and the kinetic energy uh, and uh, well to, to build that kind of uh, stochastic model actually what will be very uh, helpful is to have a, a The, the statistics of the acceleration that has that are both conditioned and conditioned on the dissipation rate, the local dissipation rate, and the local kinetic energy. And to my knowledge, it has not been studied, and that's what I, I propose to to look uh, firstly. Yeah. So uh, I don't know actually how I am doing with the time. Maybe I will speed up a bit. Uh, um, but uh, the, the talk will be divided in two parts. So the first part will be uh, about uh, the, the study of the of the acceleration, of the conditional statistics of the acceleration. And the second part will be about the stochastic modeling, using that, uh, that conditional statistics to build the stochastic modeling. Okay, so let's start. So what I would like to compute is a statistics, the, the, the variance of the acceleration conditional on the dissipation rate and NK. So how you do that? You pick one value of epsilon, you find all the points uh, in, the, in the dissipation field uh, that have that specific value of the dissipation. You picked one value of K and you find all the points in the, in the K, uh, K field that have that specific value. And then uh, you take the intersection of the point with that value of epsilon and that value of K, and uh, you compute the, the statistics of the acceleration over that set of points that are the intersection. And then for uh, that value of epsilon and that value of K, you have computed the, the conditional uh, acceleration, uh, the conditional acceleration variance. And you do that for... Uh, Uh, all the epsilon value and all the k value, and you obtain that kind of map, and that gives you the acceleration variance in, in color, and uh, for the for local value of epsilon and k. And what you can notice is, uh, I would say, as expected, when you increase the local dissipation rate, you increase the, the acceleration variance, but uh, as it's unexpected to me, it's when uh, you increase uh, the, the value of the kinetic energy for a fixed value of the dissipation rate. Basically, when you move along a, a straight line, a straight vertical line, you can see that you also increase uh, the acceleration variance. So you can see that the ISO, uh, ISO value uh, are not uh, a straight vertical line. And that means that uh, all the effect of the of the kinetic energy is not through the, the, the dissipation rate and the intermittency effect on the cascade uh, for the for the acceleration. There is also a direct effect of the of the kinetic energy or the of the large scales on the on the acceleration of the fluid particles. So to be more uh, more quantitative, let's analyze some uh, some uh, some cut of uh, of the previous map. And so here you can see the evolution of the acceleration acceleration variance uh, for a fixed k uh, for a different value of uh, of k fix. Here the, the different color you increase k uh, when you go to the black uh, versus the, the the dissipation rate. So basically you can see that uh, it has more or less the same shape, whatever the value of k. And uh, when epsilon is uh, sufficiently large, uh, it uh, evolves as a, as a power law. And if now you you look at the evolution uh, for a fixed value of epsilon uh, versus k, here uh, you can see that uh, here again the different value of epsilon correspond to the different color. And uh, in you, uh, if you increase epsilon, you are, are moving to the to the black color. And uh, well, you can see that uh, when you increase k, uh, the square of the acceleration, the, the conditional acceleration, uh, increase exponentially. Notice here it's a linear scale versus a logarithmic scale. And so we have uh, an exponential dependence of the, of the acceleration with the local kinetic energy. And so uh, I, I spare you some details, but we can propose uh, that kind of expression for the for the for the, the conditional acceleration variance. So just to 
to test that, uh, that scaling, you can uh, normalize uh, everything and, and plot the, the ratio. Uh, and you can see that uh, indeed you have a good collapse when you normalize uh, properly uh, with epsilon. That, uh, so it's indeed that you have that kind of, uh, of scale of uh, variable separation. And indeed, uh, you, you can see that uh, you have the exponential dependence with, uh, with K. And uh, well, for, for sake of time, I, I will speed up a bit and I will not uh, detail too much the, the dependence with, uh, uh, of, the, of the acceleration variance conditional of epsilon uh, solely, uh, but just uh, I will take an approximation and I will say that, uh, that, uh, that, um, that acceleration variance here uh, depend on a uh, uh, well, present a power law in uh, for large value of epsilon, and that the power law basically is a, with a, an exponent three and a half uh, plus a, a small or logarithmic correction with uh, with the Reynolds number. And uh, I think well, I, I'll be happy to discuss that because uh, I spend the time to to make that very well uh, to to work on that. But I, I will skip the, the, the two or three slides to well just to to check off time because I, I'm speaking slowly. Uh, sorry. Okay. And so well I, at the end uh, at the end uh, we have that kind of expression for the for the acceleration uh, the double uh, doubly uh, uh, acceleration variance doubly conditional acceleration variance. Uh, with again the exponential uh, dependence with k and the power law dependence with uh, with epsilon, and well, uh, to my knowledge, it's uh, it's kind of new and uh, that's called for uh, for physical interpretation. And uh, well, I, I must say that I, I, I'm not uh, well. Maybe you you you'll have a better idea, and I, I'll be happy to discuss with you about that. And uh, well, I, I have the feeling that it's work in progress, and maybe uh, well, it it has to be to be. Well, maybe to to be cleaned a bit, but uh, well, anyway, that's where where I am in in the reflection, and uh, well, you know, uh, as we see the, in the in the introduction, we can uh, mo mo model the, the dissipation rate as a, as a multiplicative uh, uh, cascade, as a multiplicative process, and so you have the, the locally the local uh, dissipation rate is uh, basically the average dissipation rate uh, time. Uh, uh, that is multiplied by a, a large number of, of random number, and that gives you the, the log normal distribution for the for the uh, for the, the local dissipation rate. And actually, with that kind of uh, of expression for uh, for the acceleration uh, for the acceleration variance, uh, it means that we can see that the, the local acceleration can be given as a multiplicative process. So as well, uh, the local acceleration will be given by the, the acceleration that will have of, of a large fluid packets and that will be uh, scaled uh, when you uh, decrease and you consider the small fluid packets within that large fluid packets and, and so on and so on. And you can see that the, the acceleration will be uh, given by the, that kind of, uh, of process. If you take for, the, for the, the scaling factor, theta, that kind of expression. And it means that uh, you exponential of the logarithm of, uh, of zeta here uh, give you the, the same kind of dependence as uh, the, the, the one you have for the dissipation rate. But it means also that in the theta, you have also uh, that kind of, of terms that appear. And it means that you have a direct cinematic effect of the eddies of uh, scale i uh, on, the, on the dynamic of the, of the, of the fluid particles. So if you well you you assemble everything and you you can obtain that kind of uh, of relation and uh, because uh, you make the, the summation of the kinetic energy of all the eddies along the spectra and that gives you k the kinetic energy and uh, here you have the, the, the dissipation rate so you you can see that uh, you have that kind of multiplicative process for the for the acceleration. Uh, and well, uh, for the interpretation, I, I think it can be a, like a kinematic effect that sweeping uh, caused by uh, the fluctuation at, at a given scale uh, can, uh, can uh, produce acceleration of that fluid packets. And maybe it can be also seen as a, as a, a equivalent of a 
energy cascade, but for the momentum. So maybe not the, the actual momentum because momentum is conserved. So you are not adding or, or losing momentum in the in the cascade in the cascade, but uh, for the momentum uh, fluctuation. So maybe you can see uh, the, 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 the square of the acceleration as, a, as the variance of the rate of, uh, of uh, variation of the, of the momentum. And so as epsilon is a, is, a, is a rate of variation of the energy. Well, uh, that's basically what I, I wanted to, to, to present for that first part. And uh, the idea now is to, to turn to the, to use, to exploit that, uh, that uh, stochastic, so that uh, uh, conditional statistics to, to build a, a stochastic model for the, the fluid particle dynamics. So maybe uh, I'm not sure you are familiar with stochastic modeling. So I prepare some few slides, just a very, very crude uh, introduction to stochastic calculus. Uh, well, well, two minutes. Uh, and so, uh, well, we can start the, the, the stochastic, uh, the, the everything stochastic with a random walk. So uh, let's just imagine you have a, a small walker uh, on, a, on, a, on a square lattice and it makes some steps. And after uh, two, 2,000 or so steps, that's uh, the, the path he has, he has traveled. And after uh, many more uh, steps, that's uh, it, the, the walk looks like this. And uh, after a huge number of steps, it uh, it's will uh, look like that. And so the, the first question you can ask is, what is uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, distance that the, the walker has traveled from the, uh, the initial instant. And uh, actually, you can just, uh, basically, it's a very simple calculation, but you, you can see that uh, the, the, the square, uh, the, the average of the square of the distance uh, increase as the number of steps, basically, if uh, it's doing the, the same, uh, the step is the same size. And uh, well, uh, from that, you can define a, a diffusion coefficient that uh, the, the square of the, of the step size divided by the, the square of the, of the time lapse between two, two steps. That's the diffusion coefficient, and you have the normal diffusion, as you, as you know. And from that, we can define the, the Weiner process. And uh, by taking a kind of specific limit, you take the, the, the step size uh, going to zero. But in the same time, uh, as you are, are reducing the, steps, the step size, you are keeping the same end-to-end uh, -end, uh, average distance, square of average distance constant. Uh, that means that basically, as you are reducing the step size, you are increasing the, the, the number of steps. And that limit is called the Weiner process, and that's a very basic uh, ingredient of, of stochastic calculus. Uh, well, and so uh, there is some property, mathematical properties that are interesting. So that's continuous. Uh, it has a, a well-defined variance that increase in time. And uh, probably what is important to have in mind is that the, the Weiner process, uh, that random work, is not differentiable. Uh, you cannot differentiate uh, if you are looking. Uh, well, there is no way to 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 fit a, a tangent to that to that kind of stochastic process. If so, if you zoom in, uh, you will see again some uh, some mountain and, and so and so uh, and so well. I will keep going on that. Uh, and so uh, now uh, for the for the modeling, uh, very basic uh, Brownian motion a while ago. I think it goes back to Einstein and, and Perrin and and uh, and uh, well. And uh, we can uh, have the, the you know the a small a small bit of, of pollen in a in a uh, in a in a liquid and it uh, experiences random motion and uh, the, the the random the pass of that of that little bead is a uh, can be modeled uh, with uh, with uh, the increment or with the the Weiner process and uh, you have the, the increment of the of the position will be given by the increment of the of the Weiner process and if you increase in integrate you have the kind of uh, of uh, what mathematicians call a Brownian motion. For, well, and, uh, here you have an example. And for, uh, for physicists, uh, for physicists, it, it is not very uh, um, uh, satisfying because, uh, well, the, the, the bead uh, has inertia. And so uh, if, it's, uh, if it has inertia, uh, the, the, the velocity should evolve continuously. And, uh, but uh, as you remember, the, the Weiner process is not differentiable. So it means that uh, the, uh, 
there is uh, there is the velocity is uh, is not very defined is not uh, is, is not really defined and so uh, to account for the inertia we can uh, we can have the what is called the Langevin equation and so you instead of modeling the uh, directly the, with a stochastic process for the position, we use a stochastic process for the velocity, and we add uh, in the velocity uh, uh, viscous damping uh, that uh, mimics the effect of, of viscosity. Let's say, and uh, and with that we have a, we can have a, a stationary process for the velocity, and uh, and the autocorrelation of the velocity uh, present an exponential decay. Uh, but the velocity is uh, is still uh, you remember you cannot uh, differentiate the, the Weiner process so you the, the velocity is not differentiable so it means that there is no uh, no acceleration that is properly defined and uh, and with that kind of process uh, every uh, velocity increment that is larger than zero will uh, will be uh, will be Gaussian. So with that, uh, I will skip the next two slides for well for shape of, of brevity, and uh, I will move to the to the to the part uh, to the new part. And uh, in the same way, we have uh, extended for going from the the, the, the first uh, version of the Brownian motion to the Langevin equation. We can make a, a further extension and propose a, a stochastic process. Not for the position, not for the velocity, but for the for the acceleration. That's what we uh, I introduce at the end of the introduction. And uh, with M is uh, the the drift term, and D is uh, the the diffusion term, and they are both uh, well. M is a, is a vector, and D is a, is a, is, a, is, a, is a matrix, second vector. Okay, and as we 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 discuss, we expect that both M and D present uh, uh, feedback and depend on the acceleration and the velocity itself. So uh, now, what I, I will propose you is uh, well, I will go quickly on the on the derivation of the model, but there is basically four assumptions. I will discuss those four assumptions uh, to to build the model. So the first assumption we already discussed it is uh, that there is a, it's uh, relevant to consider such kind of of model. Well, there is a technique of stochastic calculus with the Ito formula, and you can, from that equation, obtain the, the, the increment of the square of the acceleration, and you obtain, it's like a second order Taylor expansion, let's say, and you can obtain that kind of expansion. So now uh, the second assumption is to use the expression for the for the conditional variance that we had previously with the exponential dependence on k and the power of dependence on epsilon, but it's to assume that uh, that kind of relation uh, holds uh, instantaneously, not only on uh, in statistics. And so we have that kind of relation between a epsilon and k. And uh, making a Taylor expansion again, uh, we can uh, write the, the increment of uh, of a square uh, with uh, uh, increment of k and the increment of epsilon. And uh, finally, uh, using the relation we saw at the beginning, that the increment of k is connected to the to the to the power exchange and so to the dot product between a and u. Uh, we can uh, substitute and have that kind of expression where uh, you have the, the, the square, uh, the increment of the square of A that will depend on those on this term. And for that, I use, uh, uh, I assume that uh, the, the variation or the increment of, uh, of the dissipation rate, epsilon, can be modeled as a multiplicative process, a multiplicative stochastic process that, uh, that has that, uh, that form. So well, I plug everything, and I have two two equations for the square of the for the increment of the square of the acceleration. And the game now is to identify uh, those two equations to find what is uh, m and what is uh, d here. Uh, but before processing proceeding, uh, uh, we need to 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 specify a bit the the shape of that uh, diffusion tensor. And the, the third assumption is to consider that the, the diffusion tensor has a, a diagonal part, uh, an isotropic part, if you if you like, but has also a skew, uh, a skew symmetric part. Mm -hmm. And 
that may seem odd at, uh, at first because uh, you, you, you may think that if I add a, a skew symmetric part in the diffusion tensor, uh, I will uh, break the, the isotropy of the motion and the chirality or, or the chirality of the, or I introduce some chirality of the motion, but it is not so because the, the, the dissipation, the, the diffusion tensor is always, uh, come always multiplied by the, the increment of the Wiener process, which is, uh, which has a, uh, the symmetry, the plus or minus symmetry, so that does not increase, introduce any chirality. And so that skew symmetric term uh, can be expressed uh, with a, a pseudo vector, let's say that omega, and uh, from, uh, from uh, let's say, the universality assumption at the beginning to build uh, such a, a pseudo vector, uh, we need to, to, to express it from the, the vectorial product of two vectors. And in, the, in, uh, in our basket, we have only two vectors at end, uh, the acceleration and the velocity. And so we can, uh, we can assume that, uh, that, uh, that omega vector is uh, is built like that. And there is now uh, a last assumption, which I call maximum winding hypothesis. And uh, it's kind of a, a relation between C1 and C2, uh, two, two, two parameters here, uh, and uh, taking the, the, the kind of maximum value that uh, allows uh, the, the diffusion tensor to be uh, positively defined. Well, and uh, doing so, uh, I spare you the math, the math but uh, we that introduce actually uh, uh, naturally, I will say, the, the decomposition between the tangential acceleration, uh, so the acceleration along the, the, the velocity, and the normal acceleration, so the, the acceleration uh, between the, the, the center of the, of the rotation, and the normal acceleration. And so you have that kind of, of term. You have here uh, the tangential acceleration on the diagonal part and the normal acceleration on the, on the off-diagonal terms. And B here is what is called the, the binormal uh, vector. It's the vector that is both uh, perpendicular to the tangential direction and the normal direction. Okay, and uh, let's move now to the to the last assumption of the to building the model. And basically, we need to to specify what is uh, what is uh, the multiplicative process for the dissipation rate. And I, I will go quickly on that because it's a bit uh, a bit technical, but very interesting, but a bit technical. Uh, uh, basically, uh, for that we want the, the dissipation rate to be uh, log normally distributed. So we take a log normal process, but to to be consistent with the, the idea of a cascade, uh, it has to be a non-Markovian, and it has to to present a logarithmic uh, uh, decay of the correlation. And uh, as uh, Laurent Chevillard showed, uh, we can uh, we can uh, obtain that with that kind of stochastic process uh, building on a on a fractional Brownian motion, for example, or, uh, or uh, non-Markovian, or equivalently non-Markovian, uh, non-Markovian process. And so, at the end of the day, I have that kind of, uh, of uh, multiplicative uh, stochastic process for epsilon uh, with uh, here the gamma an integral term that uh, makes uh, the, the, the stochastic model non-Markovian. It depends on all the previous uh, instant, not the last one, not only the last one. Okay, so at the end of the day, we can assemble everything, and we have that kind of stochastic equation for the, the dynamic of the fluid particles, so the kinematic relation between acceleration and velocity, and uh, the acceleration equation here. So there is uh, maybe uh, just a few, few minutes to analyze a bit the, the different terms. What can be interesting is to notice that uh, in that first term here, uh, on the first line, you have the, the coupling uh, or the feedback of the velocity on the acceleration. Uh, K is the square of the velocity. P is a dot product between acceleration and velocity. And uh, obviously, U here is uh, the velocity. Uh, as well, uh, the velocity have also appear in the diffusion term uh, because uh, it is uh, you need to know the velocity to make the distinction between the tangential and the normal direction of the acceleration. 
So you have feedback of the of the velocity, obviously, on the acceleration in that term. And the second group of, uh, of term here uh, is uh, both the non-Markovian and, uh, and the, the term that makes the acceleration log normal, or the, the norm of the acceleration tend to, to uh, log normally, to the log normal distribution. So, well, um, well, maybe I, I spent too much time playing with that equation, but I, I, I found it, it has some, some beauty, but uh, well, I, I can understand if you, you just find it ugly, but well, we, we'll discuss. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, we, we can integrate that, uh, so the path of uh, the, the, the realization and obtain that kind of, uh, of evolution. So on the, on the bottom left here, you have evolution of the, of the velocity. So the three colors are the three components and the, the black is the norm of the, of the velocity. And uh, the same here for the acceleration, you have, uh, the, well, maybe you, it's not uh, very easy to see, but uh, you have uh, the, the evolution of the acceleration of the component and the norm of the acceleration. And you can see that uh, there is, uh, for the acceleration, some uh, intermittency in the, in the signal with some period of very uh, quiet acceleration and sometimes some burst of the, of the acceleration. And here, uh, well, you can integrate the, the, the velocity to obtain the position, and you can see that uh, the, the, the path of the fluid particle, uh, according to the model, uh, has that kind of dynamic where there is a long uh, quasi-ballistic motion where the that has about the, the integral length scale. And uh, in between, you have uh, some kind of, uh, of motion where the, the particle is winding uh, uh, on, its, uh, on its path and, uh, and so on, it's, it's keeping. So just uh, more, uh, more quali quantitatively, uh, we can compare the acceleration, uh, the, the stochastic uh, model for the dynamic with, uh, with uh, some model or some DNS. And uh, here for the, the variance of the, of the acceleration, so uh, as predicted by the model, you have the, the, the little uh, red crosses here, and we can compare that with, uh, with uh, well, some theoretical estimation and, uh, and, the, and the DNS. And you can see that as you move to, to large Reynolds number, you obtain a, a fairly well, a fairly, well a fairly good approximation. Uh, also interesting, if you look at the, the correlation time between the correlation, the acceleration, uh, the correlation of the component of the acceleration in red, and uh, the correlation time of the norm of the acceleration here in black, uh, and you can see that basically the, the correlation time for the norm of the acceleration remain constant of the order of the integral uh, time scale, whereas uh, the the uh, the time scale for the for the decorrelation of the component is of the order of the uh, the dissipative time scale, and so that model reproduces uh, the the scale separation between component and uh, and norm. And uh, basically, this is uh, due to the to the decomposition that we introduce in the diffusion tensor between the the diagonal part and the off diagonal part. Uh, finally, we can also consider the, the intermittency that we, we can reproduce with, uh, with the model. And here, uh, what I am plotting is uh, PDF, so the probability density function of the velocity increment uh, along the, the path of the, of, the, of the particle, of the fluid particles, for a different value of the, of the time, uh, time separation between the, the two instants. Uh, and you can see that when the when the time separation is very large, uh, you have the, the Gaussian shape for the, the the velocity increment along the along the path. Uh, whereas when you decrease the time scale, uh, we have the, the classical picture, and the, you are developing stretch tails. Uh, and, uh, and at the end, you find the, the, the distribution of the acceleration in the limit of very small uh, very small t. And so uh, in black here, this is, uh, I will say, the, the, the statistic obtained by the, the model. And uh, in gray here is the statistics uh, you obtain for, for DNS at, uh, at Reynolds number four, so the largest uh, DNS I had uh, at end. And uh, well, we can see a fairly good uh, agreement between the, the two. 
And finally, uh, to, just to finish, uh, I, I discussed at the beginning of the of the irreversibility of the of the dynamic. You remember the the, the skewness of uh, of the of the power exchange P. And uh, what is interesting is that the model uh, uh, for the well for the both the second and the third order moment we found uh, the the scaling law that has been uh, uh, reported from DNS for the for that uh, that p and uh, most interestingly is interestingly is that the, the third order of, uh, the, the what the skewness or the third order of moment of, of p uh, is uh, is negative here and uh, and uh, is, uh, is in agreement with the, the DNS. And so uh, it means that the, the, the stochastic model here reproduces the, the time irreversibility of the, of the dynamic. And uh, playing with, uh, with the equation, it's not really a formal proof. Uh, what I observe is that that uh, time irreversibility in the dynamic uh, come if you add two ingredients in the model, uh, both the non-Markovianity that you have in the in the diffusion in the dissipation uh, well in the in the dissipation rate, and uh, the non-diagonal term in the in the diffusion terms. But uh, well, it's interesting that the main feature of the of the, of the Lagrangian dynamic can be reproduced with that uh, with that model. Well, that brings me to that uh, to the conclusion of the talk. And uh, well, uh, just to summarize, uh, we we use DNS of uh, Navier-Stokes equation to obtain the, the doubly uh, conditional acceleration variance, and we observe uh, exponential dependence with uh, with k. And uh, to my knowledge, it's, uh, it is a uh, New and maybe it called to, to deeper, uh, deeper uh, uh, analysis and, uh, and interpretation. But I, I will say that uh, anyway, that kind of uh, of uh, it, it it seems that uh, with that kind of representation, we can uh, propose a multiplicative process for the acceleration, and that uh, give uh, give a, a connection between the the, the Kolmogorov cascade of energy cascade, which is a static uh, description of the of the fields, with the dynamic because the acceleration is uh, really the, the motion of the of the pass, the motion of the of the fluid particles, and based on that, we can uh, to 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 show the connection between the, the cascade and the dynamic, we can uh, build a stochastic process for that. And uh, that reproduce, uh, as I said, uh, non-Gaussianity of, uh, of the model, the long range correlation, the anomaly scaling, the time irreversibility. And well, uh, I think there is uh, many, many uh, things to, to do uh, more, but uh, I will stop talking. And maybe you, you have some questions about that. So thank you very much, Amy, for the very interesting presentation. So I would say, as you just uh, announced, let's open the stage for questions. And uh, to the participants, just feel free to unmute your mic uh, if you want to ask a question. Okay, so maybe I can start. Uh, I see. I see there is someone. Uh, maybe I don't. Yeah, uh, go ahead, Alan. Okay, thank you. This was very fascinating how much uh, physics you can extract from uh, uh, examining the uh, Lagrangian frame. Uh, my question is motivated by your discussion of the uh, uh, of the uh, filtered um, acceleration, the coarse grained yeah. acceleration. Okay, yeah. maybe so, and, yeah. and the and the multi uh, you know, multi-stage uh, cascade. This now, what you mean? Yeah. So the, my question is, uh, could this uh, this coarse grain idea could could it be instantiated in the consideration of particle pair uh, acceleration in two senses? You know, a, a, analogous to particle pair a dispersion, yeah. meaning, well, first of all, the like the the mean acceleration of the two particles is somehow capturing a, a cross-grained effect and the re their relative acceleration then is capturing uh, sort of what's happening, I call it subgrid, you know, in other words, scale smaller uh, than, the, um, uh, than their separation. Also, this lends itself to a different meaning of normal and tangential 
acceleration because now you have an, a normal that's defined by the line between the two particles and the tangential of course is yeah. perpendicular to that anyway just some thoughts uh well i think you are right and uh but uh well i i, I had that in mind uh, uh, uh... I say, but uh, well, the, the the connection is not really formal. I, I, well, I, I was not uh, really able to formalize uh, the things, but definitely, if you consider a large fluid packet, uh, you have many fluid particles in it, and so I, I agree with you. Maybe we can uh, make the things very square, and I just use two particles to to sort thing out, but. Uh, don't know exactly how to do that mathematically speaking i mean but uh yeah uh, it's one of the direction I, I would like to 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 take then is to consider the, the motion of uh, or the stochastic description for two two particles and maybe that's that can be connected to that as well directly i don't know uh, i had in mind more the kind of ballistic uh, ballistic uh, diffusion uh, diffusion cascades that uh, that was uh, proposed for the model in uh, by uh, by Michael Bourgoin some some years ago but uh, well i don't know i don't know exactly okay thank you thank you so, uh, <laughs> can I ask a question uh, yeah go ahead and then uh, we we keep uh... Or to François. yeah go ahead go ahead Chris. hello Vinny. thank you for the um... thank you uh, just a quick uh, question, a couple of questions. Uh, you find this uh, acceleration being high in regions of high energy, yeah. high kinetic energy. Uh, wouldn't that be interpretable as uh, the presence of uh, strong vortex filaments, long, powerful vortex filaments? Um, wouldn't that explain that kind of? Uh... I, th I think so. I think if well, it's usually uh, well let me go back here uh, i mean when they, they they observe this kind of acceleration uh definitely they, they i mean uh, me mechanically it was interpreted that the the, the, the particles were spinning around a vortex filament and uh, and the, the the normal component of the acceleration was, has been found to be connected to the to the local vorticity or the local entropy or... so i think yeah definitely but um... ah, well well Maybe that's the. I don't know exactly how to 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 make that uh, that uh, local structure of the of the flow enter the the, the the game of the of the energy cascade. Maybe uh, well, maybe, well, I I'm not sure. It's there is a contradiction, but uh, just it's a, it's a, a rough description. It's not uh, looking at the, the the presence of vorticity filament, but uh, it is there uh, anywhere hidden in in the statistics. But I think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, these both filaments can surely explain this uh, time asymmetry you find in the one body statistics for a start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No? I agree, and uh, I think it's uh, definitely uh, what I, uh, yeah, what I observe from the stochastic model. You need to have the the spinning, uh, so the off diagonal term, and also the the non Markovian uh, non Markovian term. So it remembers that it has spin like that, and uh, it will not uh, play uh, the same backward. So I, I think yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, well, uh, it's a statistical signature of the effect of the of the vortex filament probably. Yeah. I mean, spinning, uh, spinning helically in more likely than spinning helically out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The time asymmetry. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, I don't know. Well, maybe. Well, yeah. Well, but it does. We don't have to to break a chirality because, uh, well, it has to be the same. In, if you look at the, in a mirror, but uh, but well. No, without breaking chirality, just. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. But then it's a bit more complicated to see the relation, as you said yourself, actually, with uh, with the cascade. Unless you go back to the idea that the cascade is from the fact that the turns of the helix, helical helix, become smaller and smaller, and that may be a cascade of sorts. I mean, because you explain everything in terms of a multiplicative, multiplicative process. 
Yeah, yeah, uh, and probably it's. Uh, I mean, maybe it's a wrong direction. I don't know. Maybe uh, we the, the other possibility will say to to say uh, well, the acceleration is uh, the pressure gradient uh, when the, the Reynolds number is large, and the Reynolds number uh, the, and the pressure gradient is uh, uh, results from the the strain rate and the rotation rate and uh, everything. Well, and forgot about the cascade and so on. But uh, well. Uh, I would say the initial condition is important, and I, I keep with the cascade. But uh, yeah, definitely, I have to to we have to check uh, the, the effect of the local structure on the on the acceleration, maybe more deeply, and uh, and maybe we can end up with a, a simpler process or, or more accurate process or predictive process. Yeah, I agree. I agree that the, there is no structure whatsoever in what I saw. Then uh, we know there is structure in the turbulence. So. Thank you very much, uh, Remy. Thank you. you. So thank you. And uh, I see Francois's uh, question, so please go ahead. Yes. Hi, uh, Remy. So thanks for this uh, talk. Uh, I just, if I understand well, you, are, uh, you did um, a cascade uh, through the acceleration by linking, in fact, uh, the linking it, in fact, to the Eulerian uh, multifractality. So I believe with your model, you will have uh, also multifractality for the Lagrangian velocity field. I, I wonder if you have checked this. Well, uh... <laughs> Actually, I, I will say I, I have no Eulerian field at all. Uh, if you come back to that uh, to that relation, uh, that relation is uh, is purely uh, pointwise. Actually, it's you, you need the value of the acceleration at white point and the value of the dissipation rate and the and the kinetic energy at the very same point. So uh, there is no Lagrangian or Eulerian uh, framework. Actually, it's just a pointwise a pointwise relation. And then uh, I have in mind the, the, the Lagrangian framework for, for, for various reasons. But let's say that uh, what is very handy with the, the Lagrangian framework, if you allow me to come back, I have been quick on that. Here it is. Is that with uh, when you, you adopt the, the Lagrangian point of view, uh, you, you can write that anyway. You can, uh, it can be the increment if you move uh, along a direction. But if you consider the increment along the, the path, you have, a, uh, you have that, uh, that, uh, that relation, uh, uh, one more relation, and you have the, that enable to, to close the system. Actually, you, you have a, a relation between velocity and uh, uh, or kinematic energy and uh, an acceleration. Okay. okay, but you have some parameters which are given, uh, I believe, with your uh, the fit that uh, you propose in the beginning, the first part. Uh, I'm not sure to... to, to... Because uh, I, I wonder what... Uh, because you have some uh, you have some parameters in in your model and this comes from oh. the fit which yeah, are, but uh, again the, the fit uh, the fit uh, well i'm thinking so i just wonder but, if the uh, if the uh, like, uh, uh, multifactality uh, of the lagrangian velocity field can be related with the uh, with the parameters that you are well, it is obtained from the, the parameter, but again, the, the parameters are mainly pointwise, I, I would say. Uh, you, you need to know the, the, the relation between the variance of the dissipation rate and the Reynolds number, but this is again a pointwise relation. And maybe there is uh, some... Uh, well, maybe I, I just need simplification. And what I, I did, and maybe it's where it enters, it's I, I, I need some uh, correlation time for the, the the dissipation rate or the time scale for the dissipation rate, so along the the, the fluid particle pace. And for that, I, I take uh, like uh, I would say Eulerian integral time, and uh, just uh, k and, and epsilon, uh, the, the average k and average. Uh, so maybe in that uh, in that uh, in that uh, crude assumption, uh, there is a bridge between the Eulerian and the and the and the Lagrangian part, but uh, it's kind of diffuse. And uh, other, otherwise, there is not that much uh, direct uh, um, direct uh, connection with the Eulerian field. Actually, it's a bit uh, the, the same uh, question. Uh, uh, that had uh, Christos, uh, there is no structure, there is no, no Eulerian field uh, 
So, uh, and uh, also to connect with the, the question of Alan, uh, what I would like to, to have next is, is a structure. So having at least two particles is a very minimum to, to have a structure, or if we can have the, have the field, it will be great, but uh, I don't know how to proceed. Thanks. Uh, okay, thank you. So let's see if there are other questions. So just once again, feel free to unmute your mic and ask a question, or you can write it in the chat and I can report it. Okay. So maybe I can I can ask a question. Uh, a couple of questions myself. So uh, you 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 showed uh, in the last part of your uh, of your talk how the model uh, compares with um, a DNS, right? Uh, and you showed in particular how the model compares with DNS with respect to the Reynolds lambda, right? So uh, uh, and then you 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 yeah. Just... yeah let me move on. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, that's that's this one. And in the in the picture on the left, you have that the model basically approaches uh, the um, the DNS the fit coming from the DNS uh, um, when the Reynolds lambda is uh, quite large. Uh, is it related to the uh, to the to the correction uh, you did at the beginning for the dissipation rate that's uh, valid in the limit of large Reynolds uh, lambda? Is it due to it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you are absolutely right. Uh, I, I had to skip that part actually, but uh, just quickly, uh, what I, I, I assume is that uh, the, the, the conditional acceleration variance follow uh, a power law, uh, whatever the value of epsilon, and so yes. I neglect that part. And what is uh, then, uh, well, uh, I will spare you the, the slide, but what we can show is that actually uh, that assumption, well, you, you can notice that uh, it tends to to, uh, to a plateau for mm -hmm. all value of epsilon. And uh, what you, you can uh, notice is that the value of the plateau is, uh, is smaller when you uh, increase the, the Reynolds number. And so basically it means mm -hmm. that uh, the assumption of, uh, of, uh, of uh, considering that the, the, the conditional acceleration is a power law whatever the, the, the range of epsilon is less and less crude once you when you increase the, the Reynolds number. I and, see. Uh, so if you want just we have that kind of, uh, of expression for the acceleration variance, semi, let's say semi-analytical expression, and uh, you have a kind of uh, a correction term for small Reynolds number. And you can see that when you, the Reynolds number is a, a become large, uh, that uh, second term in the bracket uh, canceled and uh, obtain, uh, neglecting that, uh, that term, you obtain the dashed line here. And uh, mm -hmm. for, for building the model, actually, I, I simplify the, 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 the building of the model, neglecting that term. And so uh, I, I obtain exactly the, the expected acceleration, the dashed line, but uh, it's not in agreement with uh, with the DNS. Well, unless uh, the Reynolds number uh, based on the Taylor scale is uh, is uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, large, large enough, so it's a plateau. So very, very fully developed turbulence. But incidentally, I, I think it has some uh, interest. Uh, you, you can see that the, the small Reynolds number effect uh, can be seen uh, as uh, at Reynolds number as high as, uh, I don't know, to, well, it's uh, it's your, your call. But when the, the dashed line and the red line uh, uh, start to be close enough, it's when the, the, the small Reynolds number effect uh, vanished uh, for the uh, well, What's at least for the what is uh, the acceleration of the particles, and so, uh, even for a well, Reynolds number of one thousand, uh, it's not uh, it's not large. You still have a small, small effect. I see, I see, and uh, I, I I have another question, but let's see if there is someone else who would like to ask one. Uh, so uh, just feel free to unmute your mic if you want to ask a question. Yeah? I, I have another question. Um, uh, go ahead. You know, way speculative, but um, I'm trying to think of a way to get a little bit of structure. And even when you only have a single uh, fluid particle, 
might be to consider the acceleration of the strain tensor. And you might know study of the strain tensor equation, which is an open system when you just consider it at a point and some of the closures that have been used mm -hmm. produce some very similar statistics in terms of like the PDFs, you know, long tail PDFs and so on. So just a just a yeah. sort of speculative thought. Yeah, uh, I, I follow you. And uh, while still in the, the idea of having a, a two-point system, what I, I start to play with is uh, uh, I was not just with the, the strain rate uh, tensor, but with uh, the full uh, tensor for the, the velocity derivative. And uh, well, based on the work on, on Pope and, and Menovo and, and uh, Laurent Chevillard again, uh, where you can derive that equation and, and obtain that. And actually, I think we, we can have a stochastic process uh, giving uh, both the velocity and uh, all the derivative uh, of the velocity. So with time and with, uh, with, uh, with space, at a, at a given point, so it may be not enough to, to have structures, uh, properly speaking, or spatially extended structure, but uh, having the, the signature of uh, well, the, the, all the, um, the invariant, let's say, that uh, reproduce all the invariant of the, of the velocity tensor. Um, well, I think it's possible, and I think it's even that uh, quite simple, I, I would say, because uh, you you have a stochastic process for the, the velocity derivative as uh, has been proposed uh, let's say by uh, by Charles Menovo. and um, and uh, well you just take the truss of uh, of that tensor and that gives you the the, the process for the, the dissipation rate which we uh, plug to the, to the to the stochastic process I showed previously so uh, probably not uh, without too much difficulty it's possible to have that I, I don't know if I, if that answer your question. That's exactly what my question was, yes, thank you. So thank you. Let's see if there is someone else who would like to ask uh, another question. Once again, just feel free to unmute your mic if you have a question, yeah? Okay, then then I, I can ask my, my second one then. Can you go to the slide where you uh, basically set up the two conditions for uh, for explaining so that the, the process is non markovian and uh, uh, that um, uh, you had uh, yes no it's later yeah um, yes and that uh, you get a non diagonal diffusion correct and um so I, I, I would I ask myself how it would be uh, how how could you um, uh, could, could you comment on the on the last two properties so non Markovian non diagonal diffusion in the case in which instead of considering a fluid particle you consider a solid particle because uh, depending on the on the particle to fluid density ratio. You can basically reverse the direction the particle kind of gets centrifuged or, set or attracted to the. So, uh, how, how does this play in in your uh, would play in your in in your model, and would you get still a a, a sort of uh, a well defined non singular limit in the case uh, if you approach the 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 particle to fluid density ratio equal to one from both the sides yeah well uh i cannot answer actually it's on my to-do list to try to to extend that for particle to with inertia but what i i can tell you is that from uh, looking from the the dns is that uh, the the skewness from that uh, from that power exchange of the of the uh, inertial particle increase when uh, when you increase the, the inertia so it's more and more obvious that it is uh, irreversible with mm -hmm. uh, bad inertia and then uh, how to to modify the 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 stochastic process I showed uh, to account for inertia. Uh, well, uh, I played with that, uh, but uh, uh, not exactly in the same uh, framework. And uh, well, it was a, and it was with a, I would say, a simpler stochastic equation. So uh, I, without uh, non-Markovianity and, and non-diagonal term. Well, it was a different setup. Let's say to to make it short. 
So I, I don't have a I don't have answer to to propose you yet, but um, I, I hope I I have soon. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, just uh, uh, just a remark, just a, a just a, a sort of uh, follow up question: the Marco non Markovianity of of the of the of the model. Do you do you think that if you if you think to the particle as a sort of frequency filter kind of thing do you think that's in, in in like enhancing the particle to fluid density ratio would basically make the particle losing a little bit its memory in this sense uh, intending like non markovianity as the as the memory term kind of thing or it does not really play as simple as uh, as no, I think you 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 definitely have the point, and uh, yeah, yeah, you can have a, a filtering effect due to to inertia, but um, well, I don't know because uh, in that case we we can expect to to be that it become more Markovian. I, I would have said, but uh, yeah, I would say so. But uh, but uh, well. I'm not sure. I'm not exactly well. But what I noticed is that uh, as I told you that the the, the skewness is uh, is more and more uh, uh, more and more pronounced. So maybe there is also another mechanism mechanism that uh, when you you in, in, uh, add some inertia in, uh, in the in the particle pass, uh, well, it creates some uh, some uh, some skewness without uh, requiring the the non Markovianity. You have a point. That's true, but um, again, <laughs> I don't have yet an answer. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for uh, <laughs> at least for uh, for uh, giving some elements to discuss. Yeah? Um, and let's see if there is someone else who would like to ask a question. So last call. Uh, <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem to to be the case so uh, well uh, thank you Remy, very much for the for the uh, seminar of today and uh, uh, as you could see it's uh, it kind of triggered a number of questions and very different perspective on the same uh, on the same topic you presented so uh, i invite our audience to to thank our speaker again and uh, uh, thank you once again Remy. Well, and uh, really, I uh, thank you for the, both uh, the invitation and the organization. And uh, well, uh, I thank you all for uh, for listening. And uh, if you have any question, uh, do not hesitate to, to to contact me. I can share the slide and can discuss. Uh, I'll be happy too. So yeah, well, thank you again. <laughs> Thanks. So have a good evening, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.